Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. Today we're going to be talking about how to overlay an image on top of another image. So to start things off, we're going to do the usual sped up creating the function in the header file. We're going to take in a constant image reference, and then we're going to take in a position that we want to place the image on. The first thing we want to do is we want to loop through all of the pixels in that source image. So we're just going to have two for loops here. The first one is going to loop over all the Y positions. We're going to call it SY since we already have a, a Y as one of our parameters. And then SX is going to loop through all of the columns in our source image. And then once we have that, we're just going to go ahead and create two variables to kind of hold the current pixels that we're looking at. So we're going to have one for the source pixel and one for the destination pixel. And then we can just go ahead and set those values in our inner loop here. So the source pixel is going to take image data from the source image, and the destination pixel is going to take image data from the image that we're currently working with. So the next thing we want to do here is we want to index into our image data and just get that current position out of the source image. So that's SX plus SY times the width of the source image. And then we're going to take that whole thing and multiply it by the number of source channels. That gets us our very first channel in that pixel. And then we'll do the same thing for the destination pixel, but we just want to consider the offset that we're going to be putting it on. So we're going to add in that x value, and then same for the y, we're going to add in that y value before we multiply it by the width of our destination image. Like before, we're going to multiply it by the number of channels, and then we have our two pixels. Now one thing that's possible here is we could have our, our x and y position move the image basically out of bounds of our destination. And so to check for that, we're going to have some if statements here. If the uh, destination y position is less than zero, we'll just skip. If it is greater than the height of the image, we can actually just stop the loop right there. And then we can do the same thing for the columns, except of course we're going to be looking at the x position and the x offset, and also checking if it's greater than the width. So now that we have that set up, we can go ahead and just actually copy over our source pixel into the destination pixel using memcopy. And we're just going to copy the number of channels. Uh, we didn't specify that these two images have to have the same channels, though. So we will run into issues later, but let's go ahead and just set up a little test case here. We'll load in our logo image, and then we, will can, we can overlay this onto our test image. We'll put it at 2020, and then we can go ahead and just make that. It looks like we have some errors. That's because I forgot to put the image uh, specifier up here. Now you can see all of these source pixels have been copied over, but obviously <laughs> there are some issues here. Uh, first of all, we need to handle the alpha, that fourth channel, because uh, that the black area should be transparent. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to consider some things. But first, let's fix our issue of channel difference. The source image has a different number of channels than the destination image. We're going to run into some issues. So what we can do here is we can check if the source channels, if there are more source channels than destination channels, we can do the mem copy just fine. Uh, otherwise, we just want to set the destination pixel to the source pixel, like the first source pixel. So the only time really you'd ever come up with this other case is if your source image is grayscale. So that's pretty much the only time that you'll ever call this mem set. So if you don't really care about you know, one channel images, that's totally fine. You can just skip this part, but I wanted to make it uh, so that you can use this on any image that you want to. So while I was editing this, I realized that this is not really a perfect solution for handling overlaying images with different number of color channels. Uh, it will work if the source image is RGB and the destination is grayscale. But if you have something with or a destination with two channels, this will uh, not really do what you want. So I will leave that up to you guys to figure out if you want to support that kind of overlaying. 
but for now, since most of the time you're going to be dealing with three or four channel images, I think it's totally fine to leave it the way that it is. So now we need to handle our alpha channel. So how exactly are we going to do that? Uh, well, first we can go ahead and actually get the alpha of our source pixel and our destination pixel. And to do that, we're going to check if the number of channels is less than four, because if it is, the alpha is always going to be one. Otherwise, the alpha is going to be equal to that, uh, that fourth channel divided by 255, and that'll give us a number between 0 and 1. Same for the destination, except of course we want the destination pixel. So now that we have those values, we can actually start to make a decision about what we want to do here. So if both of those alpha values are equal to 1, we can just do this mem copy like we were before. We don't need to do any kind of fancy blending or anything like that. Uh, otherwise though, we do need to do something special. So first, one thing I want to also do is I want to change this to greater than 0.99, and that's just because sometimes with floating point numbers, you can't accurately represent certain numbers, and I just want to make sure that we don't, uh, don't mess up there, so I'm going to change that to that. And now if we look at uh, alpha blending on Wikipedia, you can see this formula right here that we're interested in. And the first thing we have here is we need to calculate this out alpha. So let's go ahead and create our out alpha inside of this else statement. It is going to be equal to the source alpha plus the destination alpha times 1 minus the source alpha. Perfect. And then if we go ahead and look back at this formula, you can see that if our out alpha is 0, all of the RGB values should also be 0. So in order to do that, we are just going to create an if statement that says if out alpha is 0 or just to be safe, less than 0.01. Uh, we're going to just mem set everything in the destination pixel to zero. Okay, and now we need to do the actual blending part of this, which is this formula right here. So this is going to get a little complicated, but bear with me here, we'll get through it. Okay, so what we want to do here is let's just start writing this down. We're going to uh, first take the source pixel, multiply it by the source alpha. And then we're going to add that with the destination pixel value multiplied by the destination alpha multiplied by 1 minus the source alpha, and then take that entire thing and divide it by our out alpha. Now, we're not quite done yet because it gets more complicated than this. For these pixel values, we want to make sure that they're between 0 and 1. So we have to divide them by 255. And then at the very end of everything, we have to bring it back to uh, between 0 and 255 by multiplying the entire thing by 255. And then on top of that, we want to make sure it's actually an integer, and we want to make sure that it stays in between 0 and 255. So what we're going to do is we're going to use byte bound, which is a function we've made in previous videos, but I will show you that in one second. And then we just want to cast the whole thing to a uint8. And that's pretty much it. Just to show you what the byte bound is, it just checks if it's greater than or less than and uh, keeps it within that range. OK, so now obviously we need to get the actual channel here. So we're going to make a variable called channel in a second, but first I'll fill these in with channel. Yeah, that's good. And then we'll make a for loop here that will loop through all of the channels in the image. OK, and then we can go ahead and move this into our for loop. And then we want to actually set the destination pixel at that channel to this value. And then one thing we've got to take a look at here is our alpha channel, if there is one, actually needs to be set to our out alpha. So we're just going to say if channels is greater than 3, we want our last channel to be equal to out alpha times 255. We're also, just to be safe, going to byte bound this and cast it down to a uint8. Shouldn't really ever be an issue, but better safe than sorry. So, All right, and now that that's done, we've effectively blended the two images together using alpha blending. 
You could also use gamma correction to have things look a little bit more realistic and kind of preserve the brightness of the image. We're not going to get into that today. If we take a look at our output image here, you can see down to the pixel level, everything is blended real nice and it looks like everything is working. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please like it. If you have any suggestions for future videos, please let us know in the comments and we'll be happy to take a look at it and maybe make a video on it. Thank you all so much for watching. Goodbye.